Do you dream of becoming an astronaut? How's your handshake? Firm? Confident? If you're an astronaut, spacewalks are an important part of your job. But it turns out spacewalks have nothing to do with your legs at all. Pretty much everything you need is in the palm of your hands. On March 18th, 1965, the cosmonaut Alexei Leonov went on the first ever spacewalk. His mission was just to survive and try to take some pictures. Since then, spacewalks, also known as extravehicular activities, have become an important part of most space missions. From repairs and modifications to setting up science experiments, there's a lot to keep astronauts busy on the outside of a spacecraft. But spacewalks are just one of many extreme situations that astronauts can go through. There's living in weightlessness, touching down in the Pacific Ocean, dealing with huge g-forces, or staying awake for a triple shift of emergency repairs, which means they have to be super fit to handle all that stress on their body. Bodies. Astronauts undergo lots of physical tests, from weight checks to eye exams, not to mention military water survival training, which includes swimming 75 meters and treading water for 10 minutes, all in a flight suit and tennis shoes. They spend hours practicing spacewalks in the pool to simulate weightlessness. Rehearsing in water helps astronauts get used to equipment and practice repairs, but also helps strengthen important muscles. And the muscles that are most important for spacewalks aren't in your legs, they're in your arms. Spacewalks actually don't involve walking at all. Your legs and feet mostly just get in the way. Way. Muscles in your hands and forearms let you maneuver around in space, so not having a good grip could be a nightmare. Astronauts are safe because they're always tethered to the spacecraft, but can you imagine spending five to eight hours weightless in space holding onto railings and juggling power tools? It isn't easy. To make matters worse, spacesuits are designed to be pressurized and stiff, making the gloves naturally stretched out. Biting against that stiffness to hold onto something can be exhausting, and your hands also take a real beating. A 2005 study on 770 NASA spacewalk training tests found that around 47% of symptoms and injuries were in the hands, more than double the shoulders, which were 21% of the symptoms. Those injuries included everything from sprains and blisters to completely detached nails. And yes, those detached nails can happen on a spacewalk. When you're in a spacesuit and trying to grip something, your fingers tend to hit against the walls of the glove. The inner layer is made of a rubbery balloon-like material, but when it's pressurized, it becomes rock solid. Circulation issues can also arise by the glove putting pressure on your finger joints, and all that can lead to infections in the exposed tissue. It can be such a problem that a few astronauts have been known to get their fingernails removed and nicely bandaged up before going to space. Astronauts can even develop repetitive strain injury or RSI. That's the same condition people can get from gaming or typing and mashing buttons over and over again. So even if you're lucky, you don't get RSI and your fingernails hold it together, it's still hard to avoid those tired, achy muscles by the end of a spacewalk. But sometimes the most frustrating problems can help bring about some of the coolest solutions. NASA is working with General Motors to develop a RoboGlove, which just sounds awesome. It responds to pressure from your hand movements and can double or even triple astronauts' grip strength. In space, a similar technology has been tested in a fully automated robot called Robonaut 2, which was sent to the ISS in 2011 and has been busy helping astronauts ever since. The engineers are already working on finding a way to integrate the RoboGlove into a future spacesuit. So if you dream of becoming an astronaut, the selection process and the job are both pretty grueling. So for several reasons, you'd better practice your handshake. No limp wrists in space, people. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow Space, which we made with the support of our patrons on Patreon, who are wonderful. If you want to help us keep making episodes like this, you can go to patreon.com slash scishow, and don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishowspace and subscribe. Five, or Valkyrie. For the challenge, teams will program a virtual version of Valkyrie. First, there's a qualifying round where a simulation of Valkyrie has to complete basic tasks, like identifying a pattern of colored light.